S&P 500. It's your boy, J- Jimmy. J- 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 Jimmy. Now what's worth doing is worth doing for money. Straight from y'all street to Wall Street. <laughs> Anybody tells you money's the root of all evil, it doesn't, doesn't yeah. make up. Yeah. Dudes wake up, hope the girl turn on, so they can get a little bit. Only woman in the morning, I wanna turn on this. Check it quick. Why the average man looking at this? It's a sad life. She fine as a bit. I'm over here looking at tails and whips like, yeah, five, six. <laughs> I left the mayhem for the market. Now nah, I don't want a dope spot. I want to stop it. I know that booty got dry. Triggered my stop losses. But I ain't got time for your wop. My V-Wops crossing. Rich with hot V's and pushing hot key. Strategy and plans to make grand. Still in my wife beater. Batman pajamas. House slides. And about five hot picks for the day. Cause I like the way the dial bounces. Four hot dips on call. So I got options. Two with a lot of volume. One with a double bottle. Now I know dumb money don't understand. Am I talking about my trade? Or just thinking with my Mac D? You see, we different in the way we move. You move with kittens and your dog. I move with bears and bulls. I got a green thought. I grow with the marijuana. Waking up with the fun. Oh, snap some commas. Jump out of bed, big profits. Eat my bacon and egg, big profits. Light up watching them candles, profits. While I'm still in my sand, making profits. They used to watch me move them pets and stop. Now I watch moves in the NASDAQ crowd. Used to run from the ATF and them cops. Now I run down ETL, making profits. I jump out of bed, make profits. Eat my bacon and egg, make profits. Light up watching them candles, profits. While I'm still in my sand, making profits. See, me and Jim Cramer been talking mad money. He said today I'm taking a risk. They got the feds coming. But I got support here with me. I call a short squeeze. You get the drop, you pull the trick and abort these. If she stay on my watch list, I might have to wife her. But I know better. I'm a true trading group of life. Call up the Wolf of Weed Street. It's time to flip some profits. Go ahead, be hawking. I'll flip them. Get your spot here. I'll double top that. But then the head and shoulders. Hit him up with this resistance. Watch him roll over. Cause I see John Wicks in contract. If I say I make a million a day, well, that's a large cap. You moving out, that's why you get crossed Get split, get delisted, and knocked off And I'm setting the whole block off I'm buying gang stock and selling them Roblox off I jump out of bed, make profits Eat my bacon and egg, make profits Light up, watching them candles, profits While I'm still in my sand, making profits They used to watch me move them packs and stop Now I watch moves in the NASDAQ, profits Used to run from the ATL and them cops Now I run down ET hey, my and my family profits. Hey, go, what we doing, my man? Hey, make profits Hey, Shug, Mike, what we doing, dog? Hey, make profits Yo, Wolf, Professor, what we doing? Hey, make profits That TTG money game Hey, make profits We some snipers Hey yo, what's up everyone and what's going on folks? Welcome to the True Trading Group live stream. My name is Michael Edward Paranati and I go by Michael Edward. I'm the co-founder and the head trader of True Trading Group. In case you guys didn't know, we were a Benzinga FinTech Awards finalist for the best data analysis tool uh, at the, <clears throat> excuse me, back in 2023. And we are currently the fastest growing and highest rated premium online educational platform that combines university level trading and investing courses with premium stock market tools, live workshops, and individual mentorship and coaching for stocks, options, crypto, and futures. We day trade, swing trade, also cover long-term investing, literally something for everyone here at TTG. We take that university level of curriculum, we pair it up with eight professional full-time trading moderators that are with you each and every single day from pre-market all the way through to the close. We're not gone after an hour and then you're left to fend by yourself. You also get access to all of our TTG fam, the members, hands down, the most educated, helpful, supportive, and successful community of traders that you, were ever, that you will ever find. Not to mention the real-time trade alerts from the moderators and myself that collectively as a group have been able to maintain a cumulative win rate on all of our executions of just around 80% now going on roughly the last four years. If you're wondering why you should listen to anything that I discuss on this channel, it's because I didn't figure this stuff out on my own. I began my trading career working at T3 Alpha Fund in New York City. It was my first job right out of college. Then they had me go through an educational training program before they let me touch $1 of their money. Then 2008 happened, and that was the Great Recession and the big stock market crash, but it was also the same year I received one of the firm's Trader of the Year awards. Now, fast forward, I'm the co-founder and head trader of TTG, along with my team of those eight moderators and over 30-person staff. We've helped thousands of members from all over the world to reach their goals. We actually have members in 115 different countries, truly a global community here at True Trading Group. So 
If you are ready to learn trade and profit for real, you folks have come to the right place because six nights a week, Sunday through Friday, we go live on this channel where myself and other TG mods and sometimes special guests will drop golden nuggets, give you free lessons, education, and trade ideas that can help you guys all become better traders. So if you have not yet done so, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on those notifications to make sure that you guys never miss out on any of these live streams. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. What a day in the market, man. Um, what a day in the market. I got to tell you, you know, <clears throat> a lot of stuff happened today that I didn't think was going to happen. And I think I have to kind of come out and say, you know, I come on this channel, right, every day. And I tell you, hey, this is exactly what I think is going to happen. Not just what did happen today or the day prior. I tell you what I think is going to happen the next day, the next week, et cetera. And I had a couple of trade ideas that I was really kind of eyeing up to come into the start of the week. And some of these stocks did <laughs> the opposite of what I was expecting it to do, mainly Reddit. So we've got to talk about what's going on with Reddit um, because Reddit just started trading options. And as soon as it starts trading options, the stock goes up 36%. After selling off and dropping underneath the IPO price or the opening of the IPO price, they actually were priced at 34, opened up there around 47. Um, and we actually traded beneath that on the first day of trading and then tested it on the second day of trading. And then now this Monday, options begin and all hell breaks loose. It seems like right out of the gate, right around 47, $48 a share, you just got the whole entire Reddit crowd just piled themselves into like $60 strike call options. And they just started loading up the boat on call options. And I think that you just got, I think you just saw people that shorted Reddit on day one, day two of its IPO. I just think those people started to get squeezed out of their positions there going into the bell. Right around 3.30, the stock shot up from like 55 all the way up to 62 and now trading higher in the after hour session. So th these you know, this stock is really starting to, is starting to move and the buzz on social media, specifically Reddit continues to kind of swirl and continues to climb. I actually came into the, in, came into the day today saying to myself, man, that 45 level is big. That 45 level is very important. And I was like, if 45 breaks, I'm going to short Reddit. <laughs> like that was actually what I wasn't even really thinking about Reddit for a long, but now that I see the action today. I'm like, oh, I, I should have thought maybe more outside the box on this IPO because it makes sense. <laughs> like, it just it makes sense to see the as soon as they start trading options, the entire Reddit community piles into Reddit stock. It just makes sense. <laughs> so, you know, I, I didn't think about that like prior to today, but then after watching the price action, it just that's what it felt like to me. It felt like to me that this was you know, a bit of a short squeeze or, you know, some people will call it a gamma squeeze or whatever it is, because essentially the way that this works is you'll have, if let's say the stock is trading at 47, 48, and let's say there's like thousands and thousands of call options that are, that are bought at like $60. Market makers are the people that are selling those options at $60. I'm just using $60 as an example. But market makers are the ones selling that position, selling those options at 60. Now, if the stock does not get to 60 by the time it expires, then the market maker has no obligation to deliver any stock. Obviously, the option expires worthless. The market maker keeps all of the premium that the unsuspecting trader that bought it um, paid for. And that trader loses all their money and the market maker keeps all of their money. And that's what happens in a normal environment. However, when market makers are really being pressured and there's a lot of volume going off at those deeper out strike prices. If the stock starts to work its way towards that, towards those strike prices, what ends up happening is the market makers will then hedge their position and they will actually start buying shares of the stock to balance out the call options that they sold. Because what happens is let's say if Reddit goes to $75, by the time the option expires, the market maker has to then deliver those shares at $60, even though the stock would be trading up there at 75. And that's where 
the market maker gets themselves into a lot of trouble. So to hedge those positions, they actually buy shares of the stock as it approaches the strike price. So if it does get to the strike price, the market maker is not completely exposed with that basically just selling the call options at that higher strike. They're actually able to offset that by owning shares as the stock starts to work its way to the upside. Okay. That dynamic is actually what, when people talk about a gamma squeeze, that is what that dynamic is. Um, but then you just have a short squeeze on top of that, which fuels the gamma squeeze. And that's going to be when people come in, they short the IPO, they short Reddit IPO. And I think for good reasons, I, I'm actually, I'm not very bullish on Reddit from a long-term perspective. If you're going to get this social media crowd, that's going to force a short squeeze. That's, that's fine. That's great. And I'll trade it. But I have no intention on putting this stock in my long-term portfolio. I'm still not clear on how this company is going to turn a profit. Um, that is yet to be seen on how they're going to do that. So I'd much rather just wait for them to actually turn a profit and then um, you know, think about considering putting something in the long-term portfolio. But for now, I'm not. Uh, but I'll trade it. <clears throat> I will trade it. And it's it's one hell of a, of a fun stock to trade, especially the action you saw today. The stock's up $18 right now, 39% on the day. And it's still trading higher right now, printing 65 uh, so I'm sorry, 64 right now. There it is. There's 64 going off right now in the after hour session. This little light gray, that light gray is the after hours. Dark gray is, is market hours. So you can see we're into the after hour session now and we're actually trading high. We closed down there at 60, now trading up here at 64. So the pressure is definitely on and it could easily continue. You know, I, I think that people shorted Reddit over the last two days because of that you know, uncertainty. Um, there's an FTC um, issue. There's an FTC lawsuit issue that they have to deal with. And then there's also, listen, this company has been around for 19 years and never once turned a profit. And when they try to do things in order to turn a profit, the members on Reddit and the community kind of revolt against them. That's what happened back in 2015, I believe. And you had like this, like, um, like this blackout from like moderators and users because they were like upset with the administrators and the, the people behind Reddit. Um, so like that, that kind of gives me a little pause for concern of like, Hey, a cause for cause for concern, because I'm like, how are you going to turn a profit? If, if when you do things to turn a profit, your community, which is where your value lies, doesn't like it and is not on board with it. So I'd rather just wait. So I think that people came in and shorted the stock over the last two days then I think those people started to get squeezed out of their positions today. And I think that the social media crowd started piling into call options. And I think that that caused them market makers to start buying shares. And as the stock went higher and higher and higher, they had to continue to buy more shares as they're selling calls at higher and higher strike prices. Those strikes, those calls could have been coming in at 50, 55, 60, 65, et cetera. So I just feel like that's what's taking place. Um, and I think there's going to be, it's going to be a very fun stock to trade over the next week or so. So this is going to be a stock that's going to stay on my watch list really for the foreseeable future. And we'll use this 57 as a possible support area if there's a pullback um, tomorrow. It certainly feels like this thing might just kind of gap and go tomorrow, but you have this double top here at 57. Any pullbacks back into that zone, you look for it to become an area of support for possible long entries and just see if the squeeze continues. Way to go, Charles. Charles says, big moves today in the chat. I made half of my membership back already. Charles, congratulations. If I'm not mistaken, Charles, you've been a member for less than a month. Um, I think you've only been a member for like one or two weeks and has already made back half the membership. Way to go, Charles. Great job, man. Charles, are you the student? Are you the student, Charles? Because I, re I, I, I recognize your, your username. Yeah, you've been a member for two weeks. Yeah. If I remember correctly, I think that you were the student. Um, yeah, that is you. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. Oh, that's awesome, man. Great job. Really great job. Really great. And there's Matthew Brown. Matthew Brown made all of my money back today. Awesome. Matthew Brown. Yes, I saw your, your comment. Matthew Brown, congratulations. Made back their entire membership cost already. They've only been a member for a few days too. And Charles has been a member for two weeks and is actually a full-time student. Um, and has been able to still be able to benefit from the platform just two weeks in to the membership as a student. That's amazing. Congrats, Charles. It's just the beginning, bro. And I'm so happy that you're getting started this early 
because I started early and I still wish I started sooner. You know, I do. I, I, I wish that I started sooner. I wish I started taking it more seriously. I, I was stupid when I was younger. You know, I was like going out in New York City and spending, you know, 2000 bucks at a, at a nightclub in New York City for no reason whatsoever. When I could have taken that $2,000 and put it into like Microsoft in 2008 or Apple or Amazon right or, or bitcoin i could have, could have did anything else could have done anything else um and it makes me just kind of be like oh you know when i think about how much money that i wasted but then I listen you gotta you gotta have experiences too right you gotta have experiences too but charles i'm just happy that you are you're starting out so young man happy you're starting out so young Yes, the moment says TGD really gives us that confidence to become good traders. Remember to do classes and trade small amounts at first. Yes, 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 yes. Armand, very true. It is what it is, part of life. Exactly. It is never too late. It is never too late. Ed Terrell. So I started late in life. It's never too late. You know, a lot of people do, right? A lot of people kind of start late. Um, and they start late not because they want to start late. They or, or not even because they didn't have the, the means to start sooner. A lot of people didn't start sooner because they just didn't know any better. Or they didn't really have anyone that was providing them any type of a guidance to say, hey, this is what you should be doing. This is what you shouldn't be doing. Um, they didn't know enough about the topic. And let's be honest, when you don't know about something, it's intimidating. And people fear the unknown. So if there is a topic that you are unsure about, you are not going to be diving headfirst into it if you don't know it. There really is a fear of the unknown. And that's a very real thing when it comes to the markets. And I believe it's why, you know, I, I believe it's why so many people are not involved in the market. You know, just only um, just over 50% of Americans, I think it's like 51 or 52% of Americans actually own stocks, which is crazy to me that that's that's heartbreaking and heart and gut-wrenching to think that so many people are not invested in the market to take advantage of what is the greatest wealth building opportunity you know of your life it's just people sometimes think that oh i don't have enough money for it to make sense bs man all it takes is a couple hundred bucks like you don't need tens and thousands of dollars in order for people to get started in the market wow man reddit is really going now $65 now on Reddit, guys, as we continue this push. I'm telling you, this thing is, I just feel like that's exactly what, what's happening in Reddit. I think we've hit it kind of, I think we hit it right on the head on what is taking place with Reddit. The day that they started trading options, I just think that people shorted the IPO over the last two days. I was looking to short it. If this thing broke 45 today, I was going to short Reddit. It never broke 45. So I never ended up taking a trade on it. But when you see what the stock did today, I didn't think about this. I really didn't, I really didn't, I really didn't think like, oh, well, the first day they start trading options, the Reddit crowd probably comes pouring into this thing. And that's exactly what happened. You know, it's exactly what happened. And they could push this thing further. The tradable float on this IPO is not very large. The tradable float on this thing is not very large, guys. You could easily, um, you know, it's, this could, when people say, well, how high could it go? I don't know. Higher. I, I don't know. I don't know how high it can go. Higher. You know, there's no resistance levels up here. The stock just started trading. It's a brand new IPO. You broke through your IPO high of 58, 57. Now you're up here at 64, 65. You can easily continue to push higher over the next couple of days. It's going to be volatile though. You're going to get deep pullbacks. You're going to get big rallies. It's going to be a trader's dream for us. That's really what, what volatility, you know, is all about. Vol the volatility today in the market was in IPOs and crypto. That's what lit up the market today. Other than that, the actual indexes were very, very quiet today. You were, you basically sat in a $1 range on the, on the SPY today between 519.75 and 520.75. And you basically just sat inside a dollar range from high to low of the day and just really did nothing except just kind of go sideways with a little pullback there. Um, right into the bell. But for all intents and purposes, you basically close right where you opened. We opened at 519.80 and we close right here at 519.80. I 
and now we're sitting here at 520. So it was a really uneventful day in the index. However, Bitcoin went absolutely bonkers. Bitcoin back above 70,000. I'll just go to actual, um, I'll just go to actual Bitcoin for you. $71,000 on Bitcoin. Okay, just a massive rally there on Bitcoin. And what did that do? That sent all of your crypto names flying again. Coinbase up 11%. MicroStrategy up 24%. Check this out. MicroStrategy is up $369 a share today. Let me say that to you one more time. MicroStrategy, MicroStrategy is up $369 a share. That's nuts. Taking out new all-time highs. Like just, at, well, not new all-time highs because you had the, the dot-com and the, all the reverse splits and everything. So you can't really even, technically it's all-time high. It's going to be much higher. But from micro strategy with that recent, with that Bitcoin rally, and it's really a completely different company now when you look at what they are now versus what they were back on the dot-com bubble. But now being a, this crypto basically being a crypto company that pretends to be a software company, but, um, you know, taking out that previous high at 1800 and continuing higher. This is another thing that I, I, I was surprised at today. You know, I thought that I was not that I, I was hoping because I really want to, I really think that that Bitcoin is going to continue to move higher. And I really wanted to load this thing up in like the low fifties because you have this like potential head and shoulders pattern forming today's candle kind of breaks that down. So like here was that kind of head and shoulders. And what I was hoping for was that if this broke, it would give me an entry right here. And then I can start loading up on Bitcoin or if you wanted to load it up, load up on some of the, uh, the Bitcoin ETFs like arc B or IBID or whatever. I just felt like that would have been such a beautiful entry spot. Um, but that was wishful thinking that I was going to get a pullback into the fifties. Um, today, just a huge move. We got we traded all the way down to sixty three thousand on Friday, and then to take back you know eight thousand of that in one day is just is just nuts. So from sixty three back up now to seventy one, just a huge move. And that's where the action was today, right? That is where the action was today. It was Coinbase, it was MicroStrategy, um, it was actual Bitcoin. It was a lab, which is the other IPO. This is a lab. This is another one that just started trading. This is a phenomenal IPO. This thing opened up down there at around $52. And this thing is out now trading up at 86. You took out that previous pivot high at 80. And that was a big break because this was a nasty candle on the daily chart. And you took it right out here today. So there's still a ton of momentum on these IPOs. And I think the action that you're seeing in a lab and on Reddit is a testament to the environment of the market that we find ourselves in. Because the market has been extremely resilient, just like the economy has been extremely resilient, just like the labor market's been extremely resilient. And, you know, these two IPOs, specifically Reddit, were really, really important for the overall sentiment of the market. If people felt that the market was starting to get a little frothy, that the market was getting a little too expensive, then you would not have seen these IPOs do well. And these IPOs haven't just done well, they've done extremely well, up multiple hundreds of percent from their IPO pricing. So to see these stocks make these moves, like to see A-Lab do this in, in its first week of trading, to see Reddit do this in its first week of trading, and you take a look at the overall market sitting up here just a stone throw from its all-time high, it's just a testament to the environment that we find ourselves in and that pe money, are, money is still being put to work in risk assets, you know, that people are still willing to buy stocks even at these prices. You take a look at NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA, right back up to 950. Right back up testing the all time high in the 970s. So it's like people are still willing to buy equities even at these prices. And that takes me to what I think you're going to see happen tomorrow. I'm telling you guys this right now my entire game plan tomorrow is to see us trade down, gap down maybe a little bit, trade into 518, and then bounce off of 518. So if tomorrow morning we wake up and you get 
price where we're down here around 518. I'm going to be long on that day and we're going to look for the markets to do that. And we're going to look for a nice candle. It's going to look something like this. Okay. And that's exactly what we're going to look for. Now, yesterday, last night, I drew for you guys the candles that I think that you're going to see from this week's trading action. I said, you're going to have just a small red day to start off on Monday. Then I think you're going to try to bounce back off this level on Tuesday. And then you probably try to pull back down again, Wednesday, Thursday, the markets close on Friday. That's actually pretty important because Friday we have PCE inflation data, but the market's going to be closed. So you're not going to really get any type of a reaction or see how the markets take um, and see how the markets take that. I think Jerome Powell is also speaking, but the market's closed. So you're going to get to listen to Jerome Powell speak and you're going to get PC inflation data and the market's not going to be open. So that's going to be a whole hell of a lot of fun for us to go into, not you know the next couple of days, but to go into next week. That's going to provide us with some really great opportunities and some volatility. But this is what I'm expecting to have happen. You blasted through this previous resistance that was all-time highs. You took it out during after the Fed meeting, and you got the surprise Jerome Powell dovishness. You pull it back into that level, and then you bounce off it, right? So tomorrow, I am playing off of a candle. It's going to look something like this. I'm going to look for stocks that are relatively strong, stocks that have held up during this little minor three-day little pullback, if you even want to call it a pullback. It's more of a drift, more so than it is an actual pullback. These are barely red days in the market, you're talking about down 0.2%, down 0.15%, very, very, very small days, right? But I think that you're going to drop into this level and then we try to be long and look for a bounce off of it, okay? And then, but then I do think that level ends up breaking later. But I think that first try back against it can give you a tradable bounce. And at us for day traders, or if you want like a one or two day swing trade, I think that can give us some pretty good opportunities. You know, I, I've been saying that I think that you were, we're about to get this this period of increased volatility. Um, I think we're going to get this period of increased volatility coming up here soon because the volatility is actually in the overall indexes has actually been pretty, pretty light right now. And you're going into a period where you're going to start up your next earnings season and there's no Fed meeting in April. So now there's going to be no Fed meeting and everyone's going to have to try to guess what is the Fed going to do in May and we're not going to hear from them in April. But what happens if this is the big, this is what I'm the most interested to see. I'll tell you right now. January and February inflation was hotter than expected. Jerome Powell last Wednesday told you that's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. The trend is still down. We're not concerned. We're still keeping three rate cuts. What if, just play some hypotheticals. What if March's inflation is also higher? Then what? What if March's inflation data accelerates again and it's higher than it was in February, just like February was higher than it was in January? What is the market's reaction to that look like? because there is no Fed meeting in April. So you're not gonna get Jerome Powell to come to the rescue like he did last week and say, no, nope, everything is totally fine. We're not worried about it. We're still keeping three rate cuts as our, our consensus for the year. But what if March's numbers are higher than expected? What if March's numbers are higher than February's and we don't have a speech and a Fed meeting from Jerome Powell to address it? How does the market react to that? And then what does that do to the probability of a rate cut coming in May? Probably makes that go to zero. And you're probably looking at the first potential rate cut for June, but you're not going to know until you get to May and you get to the May Fed meeting. See, the thing about the market, the market doesn't like unknowns. The market doesn't like uncertainties. When the market really starts to throw a hissy fit is when it can't see forward. The market is a forward looking mechanism, right? So it looks six to nine months ahead and the price is out six to nine months ahead today. The times when the markets actually get the most crazy is when it's too cloudy six to nine months from now and the markets can't figure out where we're going to be six to nine months from now. Once, even if it's bad, once the market can see into the future, 
even if it's bad, the market's actually trade in a much more orderly fashion. When all hell breaks loose is when we don't know. That's why COVID was so insane. That's why the COVID crash was so insane because nobody knew what the hell was going on. What does six months look like? What does nine months look like? We started out with us two weeks to slow the spread and turned into a two year lockdown. Nobody can really see forward into what was going on. And that's why that March to April time period, the markets went haywire. You were, the Dow was down a thousand points one day and was up a thousand points the next. And it was down 1200 points the next day, then down 800 points the next day, then up 900 points the next day, then back down a thousand points the next day. Nobody knew what the hell was going on. And that's why you got that crazy action like that. Now, I don't think you're going to get that type of that same type of volatility as we kind of roll into this next earnings season. But I do think that you're going to get a sustainable pullback in this market that's going to last longer than just two days. And I'm telling you this, I talked about it last night because I don't want you to be scared when it happens. I don't want you to be caught off guard. I want you to be ready. And when I say ready, meaning I want you to identify what are the stocks that you have massive amounts of FOMO on right now? What are the stocks that you're like, well, crap, should I buy NVIDIA at this price? Should I buy AMD at this price? Should I buy Meta or Microsoft at this price? What about CrowdStrike? Should I buy CrowdStrike at this price? All the stocks that you have major FOMO on that you wish you bought two years ago, then those are the exact same stocks that if and when that pullback comes, you need to step in there convinced and confident and enter those stocks. And I'm not even talking about day trades or swing trades. I'm talking about for the people that really missed out on their long-term portfolio. And listen, this is my opinion, right? You guys take this and you this information and you take my opinion, you do with it whatever that you want. I'm just explaining what I would do now, luckily for me, I did buy all of those stocks in 2022, and as did most of our members in True Trading Group, because we were very outspoken about buying when the SPY was 380 and when the SPY was 360. And we loaded up on stocks like NVIDIA, Broadcom, AMD, Palo Alto, CrowdStrike, Salesforce, um, Meta, Microsoft. I mean, we loaded up on these stocks back in 2022. And so it's easy for me to say that. I understand that. But even if I didn't, even if I missed the entire market recovery, I would still be eyeing up a 5 to 7% pullback in the market as a place to begin putting money to work. That's the truth. That is the truth. And even, even though I bought those stocks at that time, you'll still probably see me put money to work if we got a 5 to 7% pullback in the market. See, the way that I think this actually whole thing plans out and I'll talk about this as we get closer to the end of the year, but I'm going to give you, I mean, this is kind of getting a little crazy, but I'm going to give you like my next one year to two year outlook. I'm actually more worried about post election than I am 2024. I think that in 2024, I think that you're, and it has no, that no, no, no relation to politics. I don't care who wins. Right? I'm not talking about because of whoever we think is going to win and what the market's reaction is going to be. It has nothing to do with that. It actually, my, my thoughts on what the market's going to do actually have no bearing whatsoever on who wins in November. Whether it's Trump, whether it's Biden, I actually think the markets will do the exact same thing that I think is going to happen. Um, and that's another thing to for you guys to know is that if you go back 100 years and you compare Democrat versus Republican presidencies, the markets have basically, it's, it's a push. They're basically the, exactly the same, and they've been exactly the same forever until Obama's second term, because the markets, I mean, he took over in 08, which was the dead bottom of the global financial crisis, and the markets went up for the next you know two decades. So that eight-year run of the market just ripping face um, actually gave, I think it's like one or 2% higher on a Democrat uh, presidency rather than a Republican presidency, but it's basically, it's basically break even. So don't ever let your political views and your political opinions cause you to bet against the stock market or to bet against the U.S. economy. It's a big mistake that people will make. I saw a lot of members in your trading group that allowed their political bias to get in the way and cause them to make really bad decisions and lose a lot of money. I saw people in your trading group that, oh, when Trump got elected. They thought, oh, he's going to start World War III. They shorted the market. They got their asses kicked. The market went to new all-time highs. Then you got people that said, oh, Biden gets elected. He's going to tank the economy. We're going to get short the market and the markets go to all-time highs. 
Markets really don't care who's president. The market cares more about who controls Congress than it does who who controls the White House. And that's just an important little tidbit, fun fact for you guys to think about when it comes to your long-term investing down the road. Don't make the mistake of, of saying, oh, I hate Biden or I hate Trump and therefore I think the market's going to crash. The market's usually is not going to crash because of who the president is. If the market's going to crash, it's going to be because of other things that would not matter if you were president, if I were president, or if Trump was president, or if Biden was president. And that's just the reality, and that's just the truth of it. So don't allow that stuff to cloud your judgment. It can cause you to lose a lot of money or miss out on making a lot of money by letting that bias kind of creep into your investing. That's just my piece of advice from what I've seen after now doing this for 18 years, and especially seeing the mistakes that a lot of people made in 16 and 20 after the, the two elections. And and we, I saw both ends of it, right? I saw the people that are die hard, I hate Trump, and I saw the people that are die hard, I hate Biden. I saw both of them lose a lot of money <laughs> because of that. So don't let it happen. Um, okay, so here's what I think about the rest of this year. I think that as we get more into the summer, I think we're gonna have a growth scare. And I've been very vocal about this. I told my members about this in my 2024 market outlook. I think there's going to be a growth scare. And the growth scare is going to come when the Fed doesn't cut rates in the timely manner that the market wants and the labor market begins to weaken and the consumer begins to pull back. We just got, I mean, the earliest of earliest of earliest of signs about the consumer possibly pulling back when Lululemon and Nike reported earnings last week. These stocks are two of the biggest retail brands, and they both just said, eh, we're not so sure people are going to spend 100 bucks on leggings or 200 bucks on sneakers. They both gave light guidance going forward, and the stocks got punished for it. Nike was down 8%. Lululemon was down 16% on the back of that light guide. Lululemon down another 3.5% today. So if these are two of the biggest retail brands out there and they are concerned about the consumer paying the high price for their items, I mean, let's face it, $100, $120 for a pair of leggings at Lululemon, that's expensive compared to other places that you can buy leggings that are a lot cheaper. And then 200 bucks for a pair of sneakers that are Nikes, great. That's that's a lot compared to other places that you can buy much cheaper sneakers. So for these two companies to say that we are a little concerned about the next quarter and the consumer spending habits that we are seeing. Well, that could be the earliest of earliest of signs of the consumer starting to slow down. So I do believe that you are going to get that pullback. I don't think we go all the way down to 10%. 10% isn't actually a correction. I don't think it's going to be 10%, but I think that five to 7% window is very, very possible and maybe even likely. When that pullback happens, I'm telling you now, the people that were screaming depression, global um, US dollar losing the global reserve status, uh, Lehman Brothers moment, regional bank failures, the people that were so loud about that stuff years ago are going to start to come back and say, see, I told you so, here it is. And those people are going to be the ones that are going to come out and say that, even though if you say the market's going to crash long enough, eventually they will, but are they going to crash from $520 a share or are they going to crash from 360? Because you said it was going to crash from 360. And if it actually crashes from 520 and just goes back to like 420, well, you were still wrong, right? And think about how much opportunity and how much money was missed by not taking advantage of those pullbacks. They are going to be very loud. If you are one of the people that missed out on that move, do not let that fear mongering cause you to then say, no, this is the big one. This is going to be the 80% crash. I'm not going to do anything. And the markets find their footing. They recover. They go back up going into the end of the year and you miss it again. Be ready. Have your shopping list. Write it out. Identify the stocks that you want to target. And then I think the markets recover going into the end of the year. And then 2025 is when I actually think you get a more a bigger pullback. I'm actually more concerned about 2025 than I am 2024. Like the more that I think about it, I'm wondering a lot of this, all this new first time moments that we had with the economy, with like COVID, did it just push out? Did it just push out the results we typically see? Because if you went back to our history, you, 98% of the time, like we should have had a recession already. 
with everything that happened over the last two years, we should have had a recession and there's, we're nowhere even near a recession. And it's like, has the rule book in economics just completely changed? What has worked for the last hundred years, is that just no longer the case? Or is it just that the trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars that were injected into the global economy extended this out much longer than it has in the past? So I'm actually a little bit more concerned about next year than I am this year. So this year, I think you're going to get a really good opportunity to grab some stuff and then capitalize on, on a nice little move back into a nice move higher into the end of the year. So that's my thoughts. Okay. I think five to 7% pullback. I think that is coming. Um, and I think that it could be poor guidance from more companies like Lululemon or uh, Lululemon or um, Nike, and then possibly a slowing consumer. And maybe you get another hot CPI print and the Fed's not there to talk you off the cliff in April. And maybe the market's like, oh crap. And then you get this pullback in April. Possible. Right? Possible. Okay? So these are some of the things that I'm thinking about. Regardless, we're going to be ready to make money here in True Trading Group. I don't really care if the markets go up or down. I selfishly want them to go down so I can buy more stuff. I'm young. I'm 38 years old. I, I want markets to go down so I can just continue to buy more and more and more and more and more and more and more, and more stuff. When I'm 70, I won't want the market to go down anymore. But right now I want the markets to go down. But the reality is, folks, that, you know, if and when that time comes, if I'm right about that, there's going to be an increased volatility. It's going to be great money making opportunities for us as traders. Don't be scared about it. Be ready for it. Be excited for it and be prepared for it. Our members are. Our members have been making money throughout this entire run and they don't really care if the markets go up or go down. We've had some of our biggest months that we've ever had in True Training Group were actually October of 2023 was one of the biggest months we ever had as a group, and that was all to the short side. And then one of the biggest months that we ever had in the group was then November and then January were two of the biggest months that we've ever had as a group, and those are both to the upside. It doesn't matter whether or not the markets go down or go up. Our members are making money. They're becoming better traders, and you guys can too. Don't take my word for it. Ask members yourself. Members, do me a favor and type the number one. If you guys are making money and you're becoming better traders because of TTG, go ahead right now and type the number one inside chat. Just go ahead. Type the number one if you guys are making money and becoming better traders. Type the number one. Now, the people that are not members, just pay attention to how many people you see type the number one. Because the people that are typing the number one are that are telling you, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm making money. You heard Charles. Charles has been a member for two weeks. He's already made back half their membership. Matt Brown has been a member for just a couple of days. Has already made back their entire membership. So if these people can do this, then so can you. There's absolutely nothing stopping you from being able to take advantage of this market environment if all of our members were able to do so. So you can see right now all the people that are typing the number one. These are your friends, your family members, your peers. I gained so much knowledge since I've joined, says Armand. Armand, I remember the day you joined. Armand's only been a member for a couple of weeks. There's Matthew Brown. There's Matthew Brown right there who made their entire membership feedback already after just a few days. Guys, if they can do it, so can you. It's not because they have some special secret indicator. It's not because they've got some AI trading algorithm. It's because... They've got a real professional level of education. They have, have access to some of the top trading tools in, in the industry. And they're part of a community of traders that genuinely gives a damn whether or not they succeed or fail. And that's the bottom line. I'm curious how many people are on it. Yeah, oh, trades for free up 25% today alone. Way to go, trades for free. I love that. I love that. Guys, do me a favor. Type TTG if you're not a member of True Trading Group. Let me just see what we have on here that's not a member. Type TTG if you are not a member of True Trading Group. I want to see how many people we have because our membership is moving higher. And it has moved higher from yesterday and is going to move higher again tonight. So I just want to see who's on here that's not a member so I can make sure that I just want to be fully transparent, open and honest with you guys about the membership to True Trading Group so there are no surprises. So we've got Wes, what's up? Sneaky Zeke, what's up? I like the username. Uh, thank you, Trades for Free. He says, you're a great teacher, Mike. I appreciate that. My sister would be proud. My sister is an English teacher. My sister would be proud. I appreciate that. But guys, listen, those of you that are not members, okay, the membership right now to True Trading Group, 
is moving higher. Now, if you were to go to our site directly on your own, it's going to cost you $1,212 for the year. However, you're on the stream. Cool. Use this coupon code TTG121. It'll get you 50% off. It drops the price to $609 for the entire year. All you need to do is go to ttgoffer.com and then manually enter the coupon code TTG121. Click apply code. The price drops to the $609 and then check out and you guys are good to go. Everything that you see on that page is included. Okay. Everything you see on that page is included. So this is our 22 course curriculum, which is a simplified and expanded upon version of the training I received when I worked at the fund in New York. There's beginner courses, advanced courses, options, swing trading, trader psychology, crypto futures, you name it. We've got it. You get access to it. Okay. You guys have access to it. There are no VIP courses that cost more money after you join. You will also be getting access to our chat room, all of our real-time trade alerts, the mobile app. So if you can't be in front of your computer, you just use the mobile app. 82% of our members have full-time jobs, work over 40 hours a week. They use that mobile app to get real-time push notifications when our mods enter and exit positions so that they can still follow along with what we are doing, even though they're working their busy jobs. You're going to get access to... Um, also the watch list from the moderators, we give you guys detailed entry and exit points on the stocks we're focused on before the day even begins. And then you will also be getting access to our video library, nearly a thousand hours of workshops covering different topics. Uh, we did these live with our members. We record them and we keep them in the video library based on different topics. So you guys are going to be able to get access to that as well. That's all for just 609. Okay. All you need to do is go to ttgoffer.com. Use the coupon code TTG121, click apply code, price drops down 49% from the 1212 all the way down to 609. The 609 is going to be your, your new price for renewal as well. So next year, when it comes time to renew your membership, you'll only pay the 609 to renew. You won't have to pay the 1212. That's important because 78% of our members do renew their membership. We also offer you a double your money back guarantee if anyone is still skeptical. It's very simple how it works. We believe so strongly in the platform that we've created that if you are unable to make enough winning trades to equal your membership fee of the 609, we actually will give you back double your money. So this is the way that it works, okay? You join True Trading Group, you pay $609. If you go through our courses, pass our quizzes and attend one study group, you have the whole year to do that. Take your time, go at your own pace. You don't have to do this all in like 14 days. If you do that and you're unable to make enough winning trades to equal 609 at least one time, we'll give you back $1,218. That's the deal. I can give you that because the refund rate at True Training Group is less than 2.5%. Our refund policy is right there on the checkout page. Yes, it is real. It's in black and white. Go read it. We are confident in the platform that we have created and its ability to help you reach your goals. That's why we offer you that. All you need to do is go to ttgoffer.com and use the code TTG121. You have any questions, text us. Don't hesitate. 1-888-306-8783. The phone number is right down there at the bottom of the screen. 1-888-306-8783. Text us with any questions that you guys have. All right, we'll answer any and all questions that you have. Reddit still pumping $66 now on Reddit as that short squeeze continues on Reddit. All right, folks. So there you have it. That's kind of, those are kind of my thoughts with regards to the overall market. Um, and I kind of talked a little bit, um, ah, LJC3. I appreciate that, man. LJC3 says, all I have been following Mike and his team since 2020 as a former NASDAQ market maker for seven years. This offer that Mike's putting out there is a true no-brainer. The education alone is priceless. Uh, LJC3, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate it, especially coming, coming from a, you know, a professional trader with you know being a NASDAQ market maker for seven years. To, to have you, you know, say that uh, you know, means a lot. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Do you think fund managers will push stocks up this week with end of quarter window dressing? Uh, I don't 
think so. I don't think so. There, there, there's no need to window dress. You know, you're up huge on the quarter. I, I don't think there's really any need to really to window dress. Um, you know, the markets and, and all the different sectors have all basically gone straight up to start Q1. Um, so I just don't, I don't necessarily think there's window dressing. I'm actually thinking that we, we may, you know, pull this back. I, I think that, you know, we drop into this level, right? Try to bounce off of it. Um, but then eventually I think that level, I think that level does break. And my target is actually 508.50. So this is actually my target. All right. This level right here. That's my target right there. So I actually, I actually do not, I'm not in the camp that you're going to get this. I don't think that that's what you're, I don't think that's what you're going to get. I think that this, this fed meeting gap up, I think that that could be the, if not close to a, a, a top here to finish out Q1. And then maybe you get a little bit of a pullback to start off April. Just, just kind of my, just kind of my thoughts. So that's kind of the camp that I'm in, right? That's kind of the camp that I'm in there. Okay. All right, guys, we will do, we'll wrap things up here with a little quick segment of grade my stock. I know you guys love the grade my stock segment. So what that is, is you guys call out a ticker symbol and I give it a grade, A, B, C, D, F. A, I love it. I'd buy it now. B, um, I like it. I own it. Maybe I'd, I'm holding it. C, I'm not really. I'm indifferent. D, not a fan. I would, you know, I would sell it if you owned it. F, don't ever ask me about the ticker symbol ever again. <laughs> That's that. Like if you ask me about Mullen, it's an F. Okay. Um, but yeah. Just figure I would I would throw that stuff out there. So it's a, it's a segment that you guys really enjoy. I like doing it, and of course I give you all my reasons why I'm giving the stock the grade in which I'm giving it, so that you can understand my thought process. And it's just my opinion, right? I can be wrong on this stuff. It's just my opinion. All right, let's do it, Pablo. Come on, Nvidia. Pablo says Nvidia. Come on, you know I love Nvidia, right? You know I absolutely love Nvidia. Um, I just I'm not buying it here at 951. I actually just recently trimmed 15% of my Nvidia position up here at 945. And the reason why I trimmed it is because those shares were up 1500%. So I mean you're talking like the initial purchases on Nvidia going back to 2020 was $58. So from 58 to 945, I took off 15% of my position right there. I trimmed it right there a couple of Fridays ago. Um, we had that huge gap up day. And then we took a little bit of a trim there on that big, huge gap up day. Um, just because they're up 1500%. So you know, my thoughts are, you know, at some point, if I get a pullback on NVIDIA that takes us back down into this region, I can then just recycle that, that those shares or you recycle that dollar amount. And then I'll be able to buy back more shares with the same dollar amount. I'll just take the dollar amount and drop it back in down here and I'll just recycle them out. I'll get myself some free shares, you know, basically, you know, entering 150 to $200 below um, where we're at. Right. So that's kind of my thought. Um, I would listen. Nvidia for me is an A plus. Um, I am. This is going to be a position in my long term portfolio for the foreseeable future. I never plan on selling this position. Um, I have no intentions on selling it. I'll be a shareholder for a very long time. However, I'm not comfortable buying the stock at nine hundred and fifty one dollars. I would rather buy it a little bit cheaper. So for that reason, I'm not going to give it an A plus. Because if I wouldn't buy it at this price with my own money, I'm not going to give them A+. Plus. Um, but as expensive as everybody thinks NVIDIA is, fundamentally speaking, it's actually not that expensive. You have a lot of other stocks that are actually, from a fundamental standpoint, are actually more expensive. When you look at like, you know, PE ratios and you look at forward PE, 
NVIDIA has such tremendous um, earnings growth um, expectations over the next several quarters that even at $950 a share, if they meet those earnings expectations, it's actually not expensive from a fundamental valuation. So I know it looks expensive because it's $950, but the share price doesn't really matter when people say, hey, it's expensive. It's expensive when you're paying a ridiculous premium for that earnings growth. And right now that premium on the earnings growth on NVIDIA is actually less than it is on AMD. So it's not that expensive from a fundamental standpoint. So I will just put that out there. We do have to welcome Russ. Welcome back home, Russ. Russ, welcome back home. Everybody welcome Russ. Russ used to be a member, now coming back home. So everybody welcome Russ to the TTG family. So there's 14 of those spots remaining at the 609 price point. Okay. So there are 14 spots left at that 609 price point or midnight tonight, whichever happens first. So it's either it's either going to be 14 people join at 609 and the price jumps or midnight tonight, price jumps um, off of the 609 price point. So again, go to ttgoffer.com and use the code TTG121, click apply code. Price drops down to 609. Check out, you're good to go. Don't forget, you've got the double your money back guarantee. I don't think you need it, but it's there for peace of mind. If you can't make the 609 back at least one time, we'll give you guys back 1,218 bucks. That's double what you are paying to join the community. That's how confident we are on the platform that we've created. You have any questions, text us 1-888-306-8783. All right, so that is in video. FT. FTAI. What is this? Wow. Rental and leasing. FTAI aviation. So Don Four, I got to tell you, brother, I am not familiar with this company. But that is one sexy looking stock chart. So I'm not really sure exactly what this, I'm not really, you know, familiar with them from a fundamental standpoint, but what a chart. Um, now the, the grade I'm going to give it is based purely on, um, the grade I'm going to give it is based purely on the stock chart since I don't really, I'm not familiar with the company from a fundamental standpoint. So the grade I'm giving you is based solely on the chart. This is going to be a B plus because I mean, you just had this recent breakout, so I really want to. I wouldn't want to buy the tops up here at 66, but on backfills and reloads into 60 or 56, that looks like two really nice support levels, right? So here they are, and I think you can get bounces off of that. So you can see here previous resistance, you just broke through it. Prior to that, you have this previous resistance, you gapped above it, and it became support, support, support. So I think these are two nice support levels that if you get pullbacks into it, you can look for bounce plays. So I'll give that a. Uh, I'll give that a, a, a B plus, I guess, but really nice looking chart. Starbucks, Starbucks. Um, it's a good one. I give Starbucks a B B minus. Um, the stock's not performing all that well. Um, I, I think there's just, you know, you guys got to realize that. Um, you see, this is a tough one for me, right? I, I do own Starbucks, right? Um, but other places around the world have not had as easy of a time recovering out of COVID as the United States has. And I just feel that they're not performing that well, just from an international standpoint, not a US standpoint. And I don't know if that's something that's going to turn around right away. You know, there's there's issues in the UK, there was issues in Europe, there's, there's issues in Japan, and not with Starbucks specifically, but just the economies there in general. They're not doing as well as the United States are. And I just think that that's showing up in, in Starbucks's share price. Um, so I'll give it a B minus. I got to tell you, a, a price point that I love it is actually in the low 80s. 
Um, so low 80s down here. It kind of seems like, you know, it's 90 bucks now, so it's not too far away. But um, you have this nice support level here. And prior to that, you had this resistance. And I feel like in here could be a decent spot to kind of grab some uh, for bounces to move themselves back higher. So I'll give that one like a B minus. Amazon. Um, I mean, Amazon for me is going to be a, 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 a B plus, um, two and a, it's a permanent hold in my long-term portfolio. I own it. Um, I just, I'm not buying it right now. You know, you have this big double top resistance that's up here at 187. I don't necessarily think we take that out on this recent move. I think you're going to have to get, I think you're going to have to get, you know, a pullback on Amazon and then like, you know, reestablish itself before it makes another move like that. So we'll give this one like a B plus B and just look for pullbacks on this thing that takes you back into the one sixties for longs. I do like it. It's in my long-term portfolio. It's going to stay there for a very long time. Lester says snow. This is an interesting one for me because I own Snowflake from like 116.84, 116.83. I loved Snowflake. I was such a big, um, a big believer of, on Snowflake. And from our, from we were up a hundred percent at one point when the stock was trading up at 240. Um, and then they had their earnings, which weren't that terrible, but their CEO stepped down. And when their CEO stepped down, it was a real surprise, kind of caught a lot of people off guard. The stock gapped down huge and has sold off ever since. I'm not, I'm giving it a C. And the reason I'm giving it a C is because I, I'm not selling my position, but I'm also not buying more. I want to see how this new CEO does. Um, and I want to give them a couple of quarters at the helm and see what their earnings look like and see what the CEO has to say on a couple of different earnings calls. So for me right now, it's a C. Um, it's at 158. I'm in from just underneath 117. And we're just going to see if um, we're going to see if the new CEO can can hang in there. All right. We're going to see if the new CEO can hang in there. Guys, you're getting now even further now new highs on Reddit. We're now 68 now. Just a couple of minutes ago, we were taking out 65. Now we're 68 as you are continuing to get that squeeze move. And I got to tell you, man, this volume is pretty good too. You know, you're looking at, you know, 75, 75,000, 80,000 shares on a three minute chart for an after hours trade. I mean, this thing is going nuts right now. The Reddit crowd is doing it again. The Reddit crowd is doing it again. This is exactly what we talked about when I first came on this live stream. I said, guys, today's the first day that they started trading options. I think the whole entire Reddit crowd is buying super far out of the money. Like, you know, when the stock was 49, they're buying 60 strike calls. And, and you know, thousands and thousands of those calls start going off. The market makers are selling them. The stock starts to move higher. Market makers need to start buying that stock in order to protect themselves and hedge against the call options that they sold at the 60 strike. And thank God they did because now the stock is 68. So those, those market makers are responsible if this stock is still above 60 at – at expiration, which I believe is the first expiration was uh, in, was the middle of April. Um, by then, they've got to deliver those shares at that strike. And that's going to be a problem because the stock, what if the stock's at $80 at that time? <laughs> they got to buy the stock. So that's what happens when when, when that happens, you get that, that gamma squeeze type of action where the market makers actually come in and they sell the call option to, to the traders. But at the same time, they go in and they buy shares in the actual market to protect and to hedge against that position. So... It's going nuts right now. And I think that's exactly what took place. I think people shorted the stock over the last two days off of its IPO. And then today, um, options begin to trade. I think the, re the, the Reddit crowd and the social media crowd goes absolutely nuts. They all start buying options. They just pile into this thing. And here you go. I mean, why not? Right? It makes sense. Why wouldn't the Reddit crowd go in, go all in here on Reddit itself? Makes sense. Right. Makes sense to me. And it certainly makes sense based on now the price action that we're seeing. <clears throat> 68 bucks, new high of 68.60. You know, people say, well, Mike, how high can it go? I have no idea, guys. Higher. 
I have no idea. There was no, it's never traded before. I have no idea. It's just purely a momentum based play. Purely a momentum based play. It'll be on the watch list for the next few days. That's for sure. It's a beautiful trading vehicle. Great liquidity, great range. This is going to be a lot of fun for us to trade as active traders. What do we got up next? Who's next? What do we got, folks? What's next? Apple. Apple's been a dog. It has been a dog. To start off 2024, it's one of the worst performing stocks, actually. Um, it's, it is one of the worst performing stocks in the Dow of, of 2024. Um, and, you know, rightfully so. Rightfully so. They had negative earnings growth for four quarters in a row, which is just disappointing. Um, and China has really had a hard time. And if China's having a really hard time, then that hits and that hurts Apple. Like I said, a lot of other places around the world have not had as easy of a time coming out of the COVID lull as the United States has. And it's showing up in a lot of other companies sales internationally. What I think though, and also in Europe, Europe also had some issues and that showed up for Apple and iPhone sales and everything else there in Europe. What I think you also have going on in China is competition. Huawei is gaining popularity at a tremendous rate in China. And some people are choosing to go the Huawei route rather than the iPhone route. And that's hurting Apple. But I don't think that Apple is going to be the dominant force that it has been um, in the last two decades for the foreseeable future. But I do believe that they're going to come out of that an absolute behemoth again because of India. I think that, you know, India is a, a, a further out longer term play, but I'm actually bullish on India as an economy and as a country for the next like decade. I actually own some, uh, I have some India exposure in my emerging, emerging markets, uh, emerging markets portfolio that I have with JP Morgan. Um, I like India and Apple just entered India. And the same way that China was a huge growth driver for Apple when they entered China, I think India is going to be a big growth driver for, for Apple as well. Um, if you remember just last year, they opened up their very first brick and mortar store. Tim Cook was there for the ribbon cutting ceremony. It was the first Apple store. I just think that India could be a big driver for Apple going forward. All right. So I own Apple, obviously. It's one of my largest positions in my portfolio. Um, but yeah, I, I just wouldn't be surprised if the stock kind of treads water for a little while. But it's certainly not a stock I'm going to sell. Chewy. Oof, Chewy's a, Chewy's a D. Uh, Heike Kim, Chewy is a D for me. The stock actually just made a new all-time low today. So, I don't, you know, how can you be excited about a stock making a brand new all-time low? Um, brand new all-time low on Chewy. Um, you know, this company has not been able to recover after the COVID, um, you know, burst. The stock went nuts during COVID because the only way that anyone could do anything for their pet was to go through order something online. Um, the bubble burst for them in 2021 and similar to Peloton, this company has never been able to recover um, from the back to reality. And it's, it's hurt the company. It's hurt them big time. Um, so Chewy's a D, Peloton's a D, you know, like these companies, you know, like um, another one that's like that is Teladoc. That's a D. Um, these are stocks that went nuts during COVID and then they were never able to actually go back to reality and, and they've gotten destroyed. Um, you know, Meta recovered, right? Netflix recovered, right? But these stocks, I want nothing to do with these things. The market is at all time highs and you want to buy a stock that is down 98% from its high and is at an all time low. Absolutely not. No, thank you. 
That's a D for me on Chewy. I have no intentions on buying that stock um, really ever in the foreseeable future. Mara for me is also um, Mara for me is also a D. Um, Mara for me is a trade, not a long-term hold. Um, I will trade Mara, but you take a look at a crypto stock that looks like this. Okay. When Bitcoin looks like this, why, why do you want to own that stock? Right. Why do you want to own Mara with Bitcoin in the seventies? You look at Coinbase, you see what Coinbase has done. You look what MicroStrategy has done. I'm not big on these miners. Listen, I don't pretend to be a crypto expert by any means. I don't follow the crypto markets anywhere nearly as much as my partner, uh, my business partner and co-founder of True Trading Group, Adam. He's very on top of crypto. If you have crypto questions, he's the guy to ask, not me. But the way that I look at these, these miners, Bitcoin by design, as, as time goes on, you invest in companies because you believe that years from now in the future, the company is going to be bigger, better, and more profitable than they are now. Bitcoin by design becomes harder and harder and harder and harder and harder to mine as time goes on. And with all the halvings that take place and the miners get less and less and less and less Bitcoin as time goes on. So the cost for the, for the mining is not going down, but the amount of Bitcoin that they're getting is going down. And the only way for them to offset that is going to be either reduce your costs or Bitcoin has to double. Now I do think Bitcoin could double from here, but you, I mean, every time that you're going to get a having for it to even itself out for a zero sum game on these miners, Bitcoin's going to have to double. And that doesn't paint a very nice rosy picture for the, in my opinion. And again, I don't consider myself a crypto expert, but you fast forward into the future five years from now, seven years from now, 10 years from now, is that a, is that a, a, a good scenario for the miners or is that a bad scenario for the miners? That's why I don't want to own any of the miners. You know, you'd rather, you'd be better off owning MicroStrategy or Coinbase, right? Then, then I think that you would be owning Mara or Riot. And I think, and, the, and it shows, right? I mean, just look at the stocks, look at Riot's chart, right? Look at Riot's stock chart. Look at Coinbase's stock chart. Look at MicroStrategy stock chart. Look at Riot. Look at Mara. Right? These stocks have gone down over the last month when Bitcoin has done this in the last month. So not something that I want to own. Not something I want to own. Palo Alto, uh, Palo Alto, I like Palo Alto. Palo Alto is an A, B plus A. Um, I own Palo Alto, cybersecurity. I love cybersecurity. My three cybersecurity names are Palo Alto, CrowdStrike, and Fortinet. All right, those are the three cyber names that I do own. I'm very bullish on cybersecurity for many, many years to come. And I think just the evolution of AI is going to make um, cybersecurity, even that much more important than it already is because of the capabilities that AI is going to bring to hacking. I just think that, um, cybersecurity is not just going to be for, you know, organizations and companies, but individuals in your everyday life. And I think that you're going to see individuals with cybersecurity rather than just big corporations and large enterprises with cybersecurity and like government entities with cybersecurity. I just think cybersecurity is going to be as technology continues to advance, the need for cybersecurity is going to become more and more and more and more and more. I like cyber. I like Palo Alto, CrowdStrike, and Fortinet. All right, folks. So that's kind of that's kind of it, guys. That's kind of all she wrote. We went over the overall market. We went over the overall market. We went over Reddit. We went over crypto. We went over you know, that upcoming volatility, how we can prepare for it, how we game plan for it, how we make money from it. We went over a lot here today. And I think Reddit's got to stay on your watch list. Okay. I think you got to stay on your watch. Reddit's got to stay on your watch list. I think that, um, 
obviously Bitcoin and all the crypto names need to stay on your watch list with the way that the rally that you saw in, in Bitcoin um, over the weekend and into today, huge move. So that's where my focus will be coming into tomorrow. Um, I'm still looking at Carvana for potential short squeeze, waiting for that break. Hasn't happened yet. Made a little bit of money on the stock today, but nothing to write home about. We got Reddit squeezing after hours. That's going to be a social media kind of push, gamma squeeze, short squeeze, whatever you want to call it. That's on watch also for tomorrow. So we got a lot of stuff to look at. We got a lot of things going on. Even though the index really didn't move today, individual stocks gave you that real big increase in volatility like we've been talking about. And I want to make sure you guys are ready for it and we plan accordingly. All right. So folks, again, if you have not yet done so, go to ttgoffer.com. That's ttgoffer.com. And then use that coupon code, TTG121. Click apply code. The price drops all the way down to 609. You've got until midnight tonight or 14 more people join. Whichever one of those two things happens first, then the price jumps. Okay, so if you guys want that 609 price point, you got the W money back guarantee. Don't forget, I don't think you need it, but it's there for peace of mind. Go through the courses, pass the quizzes, attend the study group. If you are unable to make enough winning trades to equal the 609, we'll give you back $1,218. The W money back guarantee is right there on the checkout page. Go read it, go check it out. Yes, it is real. 78% of our members stay with us. They either have renewed their annual membership or they've become lifetime members of the community. Our refund rate is less than two and a half percent. Nearly five star rated on Trustpilot with over 2,500 reviews. These are the reasons why we have no problem offering double your money back. We believe strongly and heavily in the platform that we've created and its ability, more, most importantly, to help our members reach their goals. We have over 10,000 members from 115 different countries, 82% of which do work full-time jobs over 40 hours a week. They use that mobile app. That's how they're able to benefit and make money from this platform. You can do the exact same. You have any questions, text us. We're fully transparent. We are an open book. 1-888-306-8783. Phone number's right down there. You have till midnight tonight or the next 14 people. Any questions or any problems signing up, you send a text that number. We'll answer any questions that you guys have. Thanks for tuning in here tonight, guys. Appreciate it. As always, smash that like button and show some love. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. Make sure you never miss out on these streams.